All right, so I'm going to share my screen and go to Blackboard and show y'all how to navigate through that. All your work is going to be online through My Labs. And to get to My Labs, you go into your Blackboard shell. So we're College Algebra W08. And that takes you inside the Blackboard shell. So on the Start Here page, I'm going to go down a little bit. You'll find a syllabus. So you can print the syllabus. And then if you notice a little bit further down, I got the course schedule. Um, but I got due dates in Math Lab, so you don't have to worry about that course schedule. So I'm going to go back up here. All your links are over here on the left side under course materials. So the main link you're going to use is my lab student links. Here's a Zoom meeting link. Some of y'all probably use this one to get into the class. It's got course content. When you click on that and then click on each week. So like week one, I'll have videos in here going over the lectures also. And it sort of tells you what's due each week. So that'll be where you find any extra help other than our lectures, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go into the student links because that's the main thing for y'all. You know, once you get to the student links, here's your assignments, the top link. Under it's the Math Lab Gradebook. Um, it's the most accurate. Now it'll sync the grades over into Blackboard, but sometimes it takes a while. So if you do an assignment that's graded in uh, my lab, it might not show up in Blackboard as soon as you do it, okay? So you might have to wait a little bit for it to sync them grades over. And then under that's the link for the e-text. If you want to look at the book, look at their examples, you can click that e-text, okay? So we're going to go to the assignments. So notice the first assignment you got to do is the course agreement. And you got to do the course agreement before it'll let you into any of the homework assignments, okay? I think it's like five or six questions and it just wants you to agree to everything, okay? Um, you'll see 2.1 support, that's for the support grade. 2.1 graphs of equations is the actual college algebra. So let me see something real quick, uh, 24 y'all. So we got six students in this class taking college algebra only. If you're taking college algebra only and do not have the support lab, you do not have to do these support homework assignments, okay? So skip them if you're only into college algebra and you'll do like 2.1 graphs and then come down and do 2.2 and so on. Um, if you got college algebra with support and you're showing that you got that one hour support lab, then you'll have to do all the assignments. Now the support assignments are not too long because we didn't want to burden y'all with the support. We wanted you mainly to focus on that college algebra, okay? Um, I'm gonna go into a college algebra assignment and show you where you got help features at. So if you're saying we're going to do question one, all right, so let's see, let me move this out of my way. All right, so you're doing a problem and you forget how to do it. On the bottom, it says, help me solve this. You can click that and they'll work the problem with you. You can view an example, which they show you an example and then you do it. And then over here under get more help, if you click that, you got the textbook. Click on textbook there, it opens up the book to the pages you need to be on. And then ask my instructor, if you click that, 
it'll send me the pro, uh, problem you're working on. And a lot of times I can email y'all back how to get unstuck on that, okay? So. All right, so most of y'all should probably be familiar with that. Let me try to go back. All right, on the assignments, the left side will show due dates. So the course agreement, the reason it's due two one is because that's when we do census day for no shows. And you got to have that done for sure by February 1st. But y'all, if you wait till the first to do that, you're going to get behind on all these homework problems, okay? Due dates are on the left side. So notice your first due dates are on the 23rd, which is a Sunday night. I set all my assignments due that Sunday, okay? All right, let's see. I'm going to close this out. Were y'all able to see that math lab page I was just talking about? Yes, yes. Okay. All right now you should be seeing a calculator. I would recommend getting a TI-84. It don't have to be the plus and it don't have to be the CE, um, but you want a TI-84 because later on in the class in about three or four weeks, I'll be sending y'all a file to program into your calculator. Um, if you're using a phone app for the calculator, you won't be able to get my programs put into it, okay? So you gotta have a physical calculator for that program to be put into. Um, so what I'll do when I'm showing y'all stuff on the calculator, I'm gonna bring up this screen so y'all can sort of see what buttons I'm punching and where I'm going to, okay? So we'll see some of this in a little bit when we start our lecture. All right, so remember, uh, the way this class is broke down, you get attendance and participation points. That's 10% of your grade. Um, so that's how come you want to sort of log in with this every week, okay? 40% uh, of your grade is going to be from your testing. 20% homework, 10% quizzes. Now, the only quizzes you're going to have in here are what we call the test review quizzes. So you'll have four quizzes. Quizzes will let you work them as many times as you want. Homework, you can work as many times as you want. Now, the difference between homework and quizzes, if you miss a problem in the homework and you want to redo it, you can redo one problem and be done. If you redo the quizzes to get a better score, you got to do the whole quiz over, okay? All right, testing, you're going to have four tests. They have a strict due date and testing only gets one attempt. So that's why you wanna do good on that review quiz before you take that test, okay? Cause they're gonna be pretty much the same thing. Okay, so you'd rather do the review quiz more to get good than doing that test, okay? And then y'all, your last 20% is gonna be the final exam. Now, what I will do with the final is replace one low test grade with the final gra uh, exam grade. So if you made a 50 on one of my four tests, 75 on that final, I'll replace the 50 with the 75, okay? All right, and then uh, read your syllabus. The syllabus will have my office hours, It'll have COVID information on what happens during the COVID. Uh, it'll have the schedule we're following, your grade breakdown. So for the college algebra class, you get an A, B, C, D, or F. For the support class, if you got support, you get an A, B, C, 
if you make a D or F in college algebra, that is a NC in the support class, okay? NC means no credit. So y'all got any questions on that? No, sir. <clears throat> All right, so I'm probably going to start out with y'all's favorite thing, which is graphing. So what I do during my lectures, I switch into my camera view and it lets you see everything that I'm writing on my paper, okay? So we're gonna start 2.1. So let me switch over to the camera. And remember, if y'all have any questions while we're doing our lecture, let me know, okay? Um, It'll probably be easier if y'all unmute, ask me your question, and then you can mute it back. A lot of times it's hard to get to that chat when I'm on my camera, okay? So let's look, this is gonna be 2.1. And 2.1 deals with graphs of equations. And, uh, let me do something real quick before I lecture. I'm gonna switch my, bring my black, uh, math lab back up so y'all can sort of see me graphing these when we actually graph them. So let me get that ready for us. All right, y'all, so. We start out drawing straight lines, and then we're going to draw parabolas, which look like a U. Um, we'll do absolute value, which graphs look like a V. And then we even do a cubic graph. Um, and I'll show you all how I would do these on a calculator. So for my first example, it wants us to graph y equals four thirds x minus two. So I'm gonna do it by hand and then show you on my calculator, okay? So the calculator is really quick if they already solve for the y. So in this class, you wanna get good at what I call the table method of graphing. In the table method, you set up a little x and y table. Now, straight line, if you was in math lab, since it's a straight line, you would use a tool that looks like a line with two dots on it. Those two dots mean that we need two points in order to graph it in math lab, okay? So, One number I like to pick when I got fractions like this is zero. So I'm gonna pick zero as one of my X's. Now, when you got a fraction, if you don't wanna graph fractions in math lab, we need to get rid of the fraction so we don't get fractional type answers. So for my second point, to ensure that I don't have a fraction, I would use a multiple of three since three is the denominator of this fraction, okay? So let me show you my two points so you see what I'm talking about. So first let's plug zero in for X. So that gives us Y equals four thirds times zero minus two. Well, this is nice. Following order of operations, four thirds times zero is zero. So that'll give me zero minus two. And then zero minus two gives me a negative two. So when X is zero, my Y value is negative two. So let's plug in the three. So when you plug in a three, you got Y equals four thirds times three 
minus two. So when I multiply four thirds times three, what's going to happen? These threes cancel each other out and make that a one, right? Three divided by three is one. So what that gives me is four times one, which is four minus my two. All right, now let's see, four minus two gives me a positive two. So when X is three, Y is a positive two. So here's what's nice. When you multiply the X by what that denominator is, all that's left is basically that top. So notice that gave me a four down here, minus two. All right, so I got two points. So I'm gonna do this by hand real quick. So let's see, my biggest number is a three, so I'm gonna make this go out about five. So I'll go five each direction. All right, so here's the thing. X numbers, the X's can go left or right. The Y values go up or down. The X's go left if they're negative, they go right if they're positive. So plot that first. And then wherever you land, if the Y is positive, go up. The Y is negative, go down. So I start at zero for the X's. Well, zero for the X's is right in the center where the origin is. Remember, X's are negative left, positive right. They're zero right at the origin. So since my X is zero, I stay there. My y is negative two, so from here I would go down two until I landed at that negative two. My second point was three, two, so starting in the center, since my x is a positive three, I move right three. From there, my y value is two, so I would go up a positive two from there. And that would be my two points. From there, I would draw a line through that and be done. So let me show you how to do that on the TI-84. And then I'll show you how to graph it in MATLAB. So I'm gonna switch my share to the calculator. All right, now on this left side over here, it'll show you what keys I'm punching if you're not able to see them down here. But usually when I punch a key down here, it highlights it. So the graph lines, you're gonna to go to Y equals. These top five buttons are for graphing. The Y equals, the window, the zoom, trace, and graph. So hit Y equals. So let me clear that one out if it's in there. I'm gonna hit clear to clear that out. All right, so since our equation is already solved for the y, we just got to put it in here. So we got four thirds. So to do four thirds, do four divided by three. So if you do it like that, four divided by three, it doesn't look like a fraction when you put it in that, into the calculator. But y'all, let me show you another way to do this. If you want it to look exactly like a fraction, hit alpha and then y equals. And number one says nd, that's fraction. That means numerator over denominator. So if you hit number one for nd, okay, so let me hit enter for that. It looks like a fraction when you put it in there. So then you could just put in your four on top, arrow down to the bottom, and put your three. Then arrow to the right for the next part. So if you want it to look like a fraction, you hit alpha y equals, okay? All right, to get to x, I hit this button right here next to the alpha button. You see one that has an xt. 
omega in the N. If you hit that, that'll give you the X right off the bat. And then we have what, minus two. So let's go down here and do minus two. So y'all, we got the equation in Y equals. If you want to find some, uh, what your graph will look like, hit graph over here. And look at that, that's about the same line that we plotted on paper a while ago. But guess what? You need two points when you plot this in math lab. So to get points, if you hit second graph, it brings up a table of the numbers. So since that had a fraction with a three on the bottom, any number that is a multiple of three will give you a whole number for the y value. Other numbers like one and two, you'd have to plot fractions, okay? So you would have to try to figure out where is that negative two thirds, positive two thirds, and so on. So find your two points on here. So there's my zero negative two we had. And here's my three, two that I also had, okay? So now we're gonna to go to math lab and I'll show you how to graph it. I need to share math lab page. All right, y'all, so you should actually be seeing math lab now. Yeah. Um, so, what you want to do to graph this is come over here on the left side and it says click to enlarge graph. Click on that. It's going to bring up another little graph with the tools on it. So since this is a straight line, we grab the tool that says line tool. Looks like a straight line with two dots on it. Click that. Come over here and plot your first point. So my first point was uh, zero, negative two. So I'm going to start at zero and go down to negative two. So it's not very far down. So watch this. If you can't see it good, uh, I thought you could enlarge these. Hmm. Oh, well, no, so notice this is going by twos because it's got two, then four, then that'd be six, eight, and those are negative. So let's see, I had what? Zero, negative two. So starting at zero, I go down to negative two and click that from my first dot. Up here in the right corner, whoops, let me get back to the point. Up here in the right corner, you can see that it's showing me the point zero, negative two. So that's how you sort of can check yourself and make sure you got the right point. Now you would go to three, two. So starting at zero, go to three. So remember, they're not showing the line for three. You just gotta move over until you get in between two and four to get to three. And then my Y value was two. So I would go up two from there. So let me go back. So notice in the right corner, it says three, two. So I'm gonna click that and I got my line. So you get the tool, plot your two points, you save that. Then down here in the right corner, it'll say check answer. So check answer, and then you click next question to go to the next question, okay? All right, so let me go back to the writing pad. No, graphic is not too bad on it. Um, I got a video in course compass in Blackboard that is specifically showing you how to graph on the calculator and math lab, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so for number two here, they got eight Y plus four X equals four. So y'all, the thing I would do for this one, I would solve this for the Y. Once you solve it for the Y, you can put it in the calculator to find points or make a table, okay? So we're solving this for that Y right there. So the first thing you gotta do is move anything that ain't a Y to the other side. So we got this four X here. 
So to move it to the other side, since it's been added, you're going to come in and subtract your 4x from both sides. So when you do that, you bring the 8y down. On this side, the 4x, negative 4x cancel. So then you got your equals. So y'all, here's the thing. 4 and negative 4x are not like terms. So if you want them in the same order as they got them up here, which is y equals mx plus b form, put the x first, which is the negative 4x, and then add that 4 to that. Now you could do 4 minus 4x, and it'll be correct also, okay? All right, so we got the 8y by itself. But we need to make this into 1y instead of 8y. So to make this a 1y, since they're multiplying by the 8, we're going to divide by that 8. So come in here and divide everybody by 8. Okay, so division you have to do to everything just like you would if this is multiplication, okay? So now watch this, eight divided by eight makes that a one. So I got a one Y. Negative four over eight reduces to a negative one half X. And then four divided by eight reduces to a positive one half. At that point, I could now put it into my calculator to get my two points or make my chart. So I'm gonna make my chart with an X and a Y. Now I'll tell you what, since this one has a fraction at the end, Multiplying this and by the denominator won't necessarily give you a whole number when you're graphing, okay? So if I was going to graph this in by hand, I would find the X values that made these fractions go. So I do know this. If I take a negative one half, add it to the positive one half, that would give me a zero. So in order to make this a negative one half, that first X I pick is going to be a one. So let's plug that in. So I'm going to use one. Y'all, here we go. Putting the one in for my X. Negative one half times one is negative one half plus one half. Negative one half plus one half gives me a zero for the Y. So I just try to do tricks that make these Y values easier to graph, okay? So another thing I know, oh, let me get one in real quick. Another thing I know, since I got a one half here, if I could make this part be one half, one half plus one half would give me one. So in order to make this a positive one half so that I can add it to this one half, this X would have to be a negative one. All right, so let's plot that. Negative one half times negative one plus one half. So that negative times negative made that a positive one half plus one half. I'm gonna have to move my camera down a little bit. And then one half plus one half gives you two halves, which equals one. All right, so let's graph this in. But y'all truthfully, a lot of times, Something like this. I graph it in my calculator. Then I get me some points quick, okay? All right, so let's see. Let's go out about three on this one.
All right, so my first point was one zero. So starting at the center, go right one for the X. Since the Y value is zero, you stay there. My second point was negative one, one. So starting at the center, go left negative one. Since the Y value is positive one, you move up one and put your second point. So this line is going downhill. All right, so let's go to the calculator real quick. So clear this out. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my y equals and clear that equation out. So this equation was what? Negative one half. So I'm gonna show you, well, go, I used the fraction mode. So now for the negative, you gotta use that negative on the very bottom in parentheses. So there's my negative one divided by two. Go up here and get your X. And then at the end, we had a plus. Uh, one half, which would be one divided by two. Now you could use the alpha y to do your fractions either way. So let's see if the graph looks like what we graphed. Remember it was going downhill and there you go. So we wanted our points. So that'd be what second graph. So notice if you use zero, you'd have to plot 0.5, which is one half. But here's the one zero we came up with. And uh, my other point was what, negative one? So if I arrow up, here's that negative one, one point, okay? So if you graph it here, pick any two points that you don't mind graphing and then go to math lab. So that was a straight line again. So we're going to click to enlarge graph. Since it's a straight line, I'm gonna use a tool that looks like a line with two dots on it. My first point was one zero. So let's see, starting here, I would go right one and stay. So plot like that one. And then negative one, one. So starting at the center, go left to negative one, up one. That puts me at negative one, one. Now y'all be careful when you're plotting on this because it goes by halves in between each of these, okay? All right, then what do you do? Save, and you'll check your answer again. Oh, what it not like? I must have, let me regraph that. I must the have equation's not the same. Oh, okay. So I got a different. Oh, okay. I'm looking on my. <laughs> but y'all seen how I would do it, though, right? Yeah. Oh well, yeah. I picked off. I picked one off my sheet that didn't match what was in here. Okay, so my bad. So my next question, I'll fix this. So I'm moving on. All right, here we got y equals negative x squared. So let me go to the camera. All right, y'all, so we're gonna graph y equals a negative x squared. So, X squared graphs look like parabolas. So a parabola is gonna be a U-shaped graph, okay? So let's go to math lab and let me look at something real quick. So if you notice on math lab, if you quick the, um, enlarge the graph, over here, the, the U-shaped tool, it says you need three points for the quadratic tool, okay? So, this is gonna be a three point quadratic tool. 
So any of the x squared graphs are going to be the three-point quadratic tools, okay? So now, on your x squared graphs, the three x's you want to use are going to be negative one, zero, and one. Use those three x's every time on these x squared graphs, okay? All right, so let's see. Always use on x squared graphs. All right, so we're going to always use negative one, zero, one. So now let's get those y values. So first, I got my negative, and then I put in a negative one and square it. So y'all, here's the thing. When your x's are negative and your function has a negative in front, you got to put both negatives on this, okay? All right, follow order of operations from your Aunt Sally. Got to do exponents before you can multiply. So the exponent affects that negative one. So bring this negative down and then figure out what is negative one times negative one. Well, that would be a positive one. So this answer ends up as a negative one. Next, let's plug into zero. So y equals negative times zero squared. So I'll bring down that negative. Zero squared is zero times zero, which is zero. So y'all, that negative, we treat that like it's a negative one. So a negative times zero is still going to be a big zero, okay? All right, y'all, let me uh, let one more in here. Let's see. So Kelsey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Um, I'm not showing you on my road. What's your last name? Scorch. I was in your class for 1215 today or 12 and I got moved to this one. Okay, so you just haven't, you're just not sure. I just, I didn't prompt, I didn't, uh, what do you say, print my new roster today. So I'll write you in and then I'll have it on. I'll print this again. Okay. All right. All right. So, yeah, we put in a zero, we get zero for that answer. And then when we put in a one, that'll be y equals negative. Put in a one for the x and square it. And I'll tell you a trick I do. I always put my numbers that I'm putting in for X's in parentheses. So bring down that negative. One squared would be one times one, which is one. So if you notice on these parabolas, you get what we call symmetry. Negative one and one both gave me Y values of negative one. Negative two and two would have gave me the same Y values and so on, okay? So let's see. My X and my Y. I'm just going to go out about three on this. All right, so I got negative one, negative one. So starting at the center, go left one and down one. My next point would be zero, zero. So starting at the center, 
That center of this graph, its points are zero, zero. So that's zero for the X and zero for the Y. So that'd be my second point. And then I had one, negative one. So go right one, down one. And then the parameter is just gonna sort of curve down off of that, okay? So we'll, we'll look at this on the calculator and then I'll show you how to graph this one. All right, so I'm gonna clear that on the calculator. Go to y equals. All right, so my equation is negative x squared. So come down here and get that negative. Go up here by alpha to the right and get that x. Now to square it, you can use this upside down v over here. When you click the upside down v, it puts the cursor up where the exponent would be, and you just hit the two. So you can do any exponent on that caret key that I call it. Um, but notice also, I'm gonna clear that. You could come down here and go negative, grab the X. Over here on the left side, you see an X squared button. If you click that, that'll square it also. So either way to get that exponent, okay? So now let's graph it and see if it looked like what we got. Remember ours was upside down. And there you go, upside down. And if we go to our table, second graph, um, let me cursor that up just a little bit. So you see, here's our zero, zero, negative one, negative one, with the same point as one, negative one. Negative two gave me negative four, positive two gave me negative four. So you can see they got what we call symmetry to them, okay? All right, I wanted to graph this one on math. Question? All right, so here we are. Here's my y equals negative x squared this time, so I'll be graphing the right one. So you wanna grab this three-point quadratic tool. Click on it. So I got negative one, negative one. So let me go to negative one, down one. Then I had zero, zero, which is right in the center. And then I had one, negative one. Ooh, I get a little jumpy. There's one, negative one, and then click it. So it don't matter what order you do the numbers. It'll make that parabola once you put that last number in there, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, next question. Although it's got a plus five, all that's going to do is move my graph up. You still want to use the same three points, negative one, zero, and one for your X values, okay? Or go right into your calculator and... Uh, See what it gives you. So let me go to the next one. I want to go to see the next question. This one has y equals one over x. Y'all, really, the easiest way to do this one would be on your calculator. So what was that? Y equals negative one over x. And I will tell you, it's going to be either B or C, okay? So let me go down on my calculator real quick. So let me write one in real quick. So y'all must be getting knocked off and having to come back. All right, so clear that. All right, so go to Y equals. So this was negative one over X. So I'm gonna click my negative one divided by X. All right, so let's see which graph we get on that. So click graph. So notice, 
The reason it's not connected here in the middle, we learn about that in the future. But when you put a zero in the bottom of that fraction, it gives you an undefined answer. So that's why there's the, the graph is broken right here. But notice it sort of goes uphill to the right. So let's go to Math Lab. And you see the only one that goes uphill to the right is this B. The C sort of goes downhill as you go to the right. So click the B and then check that answer and be done. Well, that's really the only one that I would probably do on the calculator. Um, because we haven't really talked about those kind of fractional equations. We'll see them again when we hit uh, chapter 8.5. Okay. All right, so what's next? Y equals? Then we got what an x plus five inside these lines. So here's a question: What's those lines represent? Any guesses on that? No. <laughs> no. Are they absolute numbers? Absolute value. There you Values. go. Oh my God. Yay. <laughs> there you go. Wow. Memories. Yeah. yeah, that's absolute value, them bars. You treat them just like you would parentheses if you do an order of operations. So here's the thing. Once you get this to a single number inside these bars, when you bring it out, it's always going to be positive. Absolute value looks at distance and distance is always positive okay now i'm gonna make me an x and y graph for this one and the absolute value looks like a v tool so let's look at math lab real quick on it so i can show you what the graph is going to look like so when you click on this you click the little tool that looks like a v up here And I think it only has two dots on it, it looks like. So that means I only need two points, but guess what? One of the points I need is that very bottom point there. We call that the vertex. So let me show you how to get that. <clears throat> All righty. And that vertex point has to be the first point you graph when we do the math lab. So the vertex point always occurs at whatever number makes that equal zero inside them bars. So since that's a positive five, it make that five. there you go, it's gonna be a negative five. So we would put that negative five in Well, we go negative five plus five is zero. So you get the absolute value of zero. The absolute value of zero is zero, okay? The second point can be any point you want. Now, usually what I do is I get points like right next to that negative five. So I would probably use a negative six or a negative four. So let me just use a negative six there. Um, so just remember, first X has to make this equal zero, okay? All right, so now let's put a negative six in there. That gives me Y equals absolute value of negative six plus five. So y'all first, negative six plus five is what? Want negative one. Definitely. 
Wait, where'd you get negative six from? Oh, I picked that number. Oh, okay. I just wanted whatever number I got for the first one that made that equal zero inside there, that first negative five. My second point can be anything I want. So I just usually either get one right next to it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so y'all remember uh, negative numbers and positive numbers is like doing checkbooks in the old days. Most of y'all don't do that no more. Y'all got online banking now probably. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the last question, what's the absolute value of negative one? One. Positive. positive one there you go now i will say this if i pick negative four on the other side negative four plus five is one and the absolute value of one would be one so these graphs are also sort of symmetric like those parabolas were now let me show you this one on the calculator because uh absolute value is sort of hidden All right, y'all. So I'm on my calculator. Let me go to y equals and clear it all this. Hey, right, can I? But at the risk of sounding like a complete idiot, <laughs> why? How? How? Why do you just pick a random number? You just you just pick a random number. Yeah, because I needed two points, and the reason I always get numbers that are close to the first x is because if I pick different numbers, it might make my graph too big. And I'm trying to keep my graph sort of tight there. Um, but y'all, like I said, you can pick any number you want, okay? You could have picked a zero. <laughs> uh, I just, it just, I just, it just, it doesn't make any sense to me. It uh, makes no sense. We're gonna go over this later in the in the thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks. All right. So here's a trick to get absolute value. You got to come down here. There's two ways to get it. One way is if you hit second zero for the catalog. The very first thing you see there is ABS, which means absolute value. So hit enter on that, and it's going to bring the bars up. So then you just put in the X plus five. By the way, I didn't see the, I didn't see you did. I didn't see how you did it. Say again. I said, I didn't see how you put up the bars. Oh, are y'all not, are y'all seeing my calculator? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll Let me go back. I'm going to clear that. So to get the bars for the absolute value, hit the blue button, the second button, and then come down here and hit the zero. So you see it says catalog above that zero. That's like an alphabetical list of all the functions. So when you hit that, it brings up this catalog and ABS is the first thing and that means absolute value. So I hit enter on that and it brought my bars up. Watch this, I'm gonna hit clear. A second way to get absolute value is if you hit the math button, hit math and arrow right until you get to the number column highlighted. And the first thing you see there is also absolute value. So I hit enter on that. And now it wants me to put in that X plus five. So I'm gonna go to X plus five. So I've got that inside my absolute value. So let me show you the graph. So y'all here, over here on the left side where it has the B at the lowest point, that's that point, uh, what do we say, negative five, zero? Yes. And then any other points you can pick on that, okay? So let's go to math lab. All right, so we've already got to the graphing part. So we hit the V, that's the absolute value tool. I gotta plot that bottom point first. So I gotta come over here and go to negative five, zero. You want your first point to be on the X axis when you graph this, okay? My second point was negative six, one. So if I go left one, there's negative six and up is one. But notice this tool only had to plot one side and it drew the other side for me, okay? 
Mm -hmm. So any point up in here, you point it. But see, if I had to pick numbers less than negative 10, the graph wouldn't have been big enough. And over here, if I had to grab X is bigger than positive 10, it wouldn't have been big enough to clock them on, okay? So save that and then move on. All right, let me see what this chat says. Uh, okay, okay, so you got it now? Good job. All right, y'all, next we got Y equals X to the third plus two. So let me show you what tool we're gonna to use on this one. This one right here that says four point cubic tool. So let me go to the pad. So this was a four point cubic tool. So it was like a squiggly line, but it has four points on it, which means we're going to have to find four points to graph this. Uh, yeah, it is probably easier just to use that calculator. If you get good on the calculator, that's what I do. Just plug them in there, get my points, and then move on. Because it's going to give you all the points that I'm finding by hand. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here's an X and a Y table. I need four points. So So someone said their phone calculator doesn't allow absolute value. If you download a TI-84 app, it will. So go to your app store and find a TI-84 app, and it'll be just like these calculators I'm using, okay? Uh, All right, y'all, so I'll tell you what I do on this one. Since that's a cube, numbers get big quick when you're cubing them. So I try to find me a bunch of nice small numbers to plot. Well, the easiest one is going to be zero, one, negative one. Because remember, when you cube a one, one times one times one is just a one. Zero times zero times zero is just zero. Negative one times negative one times negative one is a negative one. So I need another number. So I'm probably going to use a two. Ew. So I'm using small numbers because I've got that three for an exponent sitting there, okay? Now, the next number I would have used would have been a negative two. Um, but y'all, if you pick a three, three times three times three, that's 27. Add two to 27, that's going to make that 29. That's a big graph, okay? Remember, their graphs start out 10 by 10, so you want small numbers that you can plot on that graph. So let's go. We put in a zero. Zero cubed is zero, so you get zero plus two, which will give us a two. We put a one in. One times one times one is one, so that gives me one plus two, which is three. All right, I'm putting in a negative number, so I'm definitely putting it in parentheses. Negative one times negative one times negative one is a negative one plus that two. So let's see, negative one plus two gives us what a positive one. And then a two. So let's see what the two does. Two to the third plus two. So Y'all, two to the third is two times two times two, which is what, eight? So we get eight plus two, which is 10. So I probably won't graph this by hand on paper. I'm gonna go straight to the math lab. Well, let's go to calculator first. So let me go get the calculator for us. So go to Y equals and clear that one out. And then I'm gonna clear this side out. 
So we have x to the cube. So hit the x. Now, two ways to do the cube. You can use this caret key that's under the clear button. It looks like an upside down V. You hit that, put in your cube, but then you got to arrow right to bring the cursor back down and put in your plus two. Or, okay. or let me clear that. Let me put in my X. If you hit the math button over here, you see number three down here looks like a little cube. So highlight <laughs> that one. So highlight the one that looks like a little three. When you hit enter, it puts the cube up there for you. And then put in your what? Plus two. Grab that bitch, grab, grab that bitch. Say again. All right, so let me show you what the graph is going to look like when we're done. In math lab, we should have a little curvy graph going uphill left and right. Yes. Uh-huh, so let's hit second graph and get the points. So you see, I used uh, negative one, zero, one, and two. My numbers, the biggest number was a 10. Negative two even gave me a negative six, which ain't bad. But y'all, if you'd have picked negative three, your graph would have been out to a negative 25 on the Y value. Positive three would have put me at 29. And the bigger them numbers, the bigger that graph would have had to be, okay? Mm. So now let's go to math lab and I'll show you on math lab. It don't matter what order you put these four points in. So let's go grab the four point quadratic tool. I started out with zero, two, so zero, and then go up to plus two. Let me clear that. I hit 1.5. All right, so zero, two. Pick that one. Then I'm going to go to one, three, so over to one, up to three. Well, let me go back there. So there's one, three. Oh, my graph is so little on my screen. All right, negative one, one. There's negative one, whoops. So negative one, one, click that one. And then I had two, 10. So over here at two, go up to 10. And then click. I have a question. Yeah. How would we know when to use the um the, the cubic tools? Okay, so um let me go back to my pad and let me give you. So if you know on these problems I'm giving you on the notes, like when I had the absolute value, I drew the V you needed on these X3 graphs, that's when you're going to need the cubic tool. And would these notes be saved? You know what now? Yeah, when you hover over them, it'll say like three point uh, quadratic tool, two point absolute value tool, cubic tool, and so on. Okay. Okay. So right. this, video, this video will be safe for us to use at any time, right? Yeah, I'm recording it right now. I'm over here taking notes, Lord. <laughs> well, that's good, though. Um, I also got videos in course content in Blackboard. Um, so if you want to see different problems and stuff. All right, so after that, we will go to our next one. So here we got a y equals x squared. So let me write this down. And then that's what, minus six. All right, so I'm gonna go back to that page. So 
So I'm going to set up a table, X and Y. So based on earlier, what numbers would I pick for this graph? Uh, negative one, zero, and one. Oh, one. Definitely, I pick negative one, zero, and one. Because remember, this is going to be the three point quadratic tool, okay? So anytime you see the X squares, you definitely want to use your three point quadratic. So really quadratic, it deals with anything that has to do with an X squared, like the quadratic formula. That's when you have like X squared plus two X plus three and stuff like that. But the highest exponent was that X squared, okay? So that's what's making these what we call quadratic. All right, so we got three numbers. We'll plug them in. So I always put my negatives in parentheses, especially on your calculator, y'all. Let me show you why. So let me go to my calculator. And then I don't want on Y equals no more. So let me quit that. So I'm gonna hit second mode to quit that screen. All right, the reason you wanna use parentheses when you square a negative number, watch here. I got parentheses right above the eight and the nine. So I'm gonna do parentheses, negative one, close parentheses and square that. So when you square a negative one, you get a positive one. Negative times negative makes a positive. But y'all watch this. If you do negative one and square it like this without parentheses and you hit enter, it does not square the negative. It only squares the one. So it keeps it negative, which is wrong. Remember, any number when it is squared will become positive, okay? So definitely when you got negative numbers on that calculator, put them in parentheses, okay? Oh, y'all, so here we go. Negative one squared is one. One minus six is a negative five. So check this out. Since negative one gave me negative five, what's positive one gonna give me? Negative four. Uh, negative, I mean six. Oh, let me get y'all going. So let me go to that. One. <laughs> I don't even know. Well, we put a one in for the x, right? One squared is one. So you get one minus five. I mean one minus six. And one minus six is negative five. So let me see. My chat might have had that. Yeah, Chad had it, so good job. So remember, these are these graphs are symmetric. So whatever you get for the negative one, you're going to get for the positive one, okay? All right, the last point was a zero. So zero squared minus six. Zero squared is zero. And then zero minus six will give you a negative, negative. six. Mm -hmm. So notice all these stay negative on this one. Because that negative six is pretty big down there. So we got our three points. So y'all, those of y'all that like the calculator would go to y equals. Punch in x squared. So there's my x. Square it. Minus. My six. So let's look at this table. Second graph. So see how it's symmetric? At zero, we had negative six. Negative one and one both have negative five. Negative two and two both have negative two and so on, okay? So I'm going to go to math lab and try to graph this. It is tricky in math lab because, whoa, I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit and see if that'll help. Well, let me see if I zoom that and then I click this. 
Yeah, don't make this part no bigger though, does it? <laughs> oh, but I could have. Oh, I, I forget about this. I could have used these keys on the bottom when I see when I made that bigger. You see these keys on the bottom. So there's my parabola, my three point quadratic tool. So I can do negative one, negative five. So over one, down five. Then I can do zero, negative six. So zero down six. And then my last point was one, negative five. So right one down, negative five. And then be done with it, okay? So then check that one and move on. Oh, I guess that was my number eight. So that's all of those. So finished about just on time. Yeah. All right, y'all. So hopefully this brought back memories tonight about graphing. And uh, playing with the calculator a little bit. So what we'll do... Um, I'm recording this when we can't when we're done with class, I'll upload it into YouTube and send y'all a link in your email for it. Now I already got videos in Blackboard under course content, but they're not of your class. So if you want to see your class, I'll have a video I'll send for y'all later. All right, so that okay. All right, y'all, I'm just trying to make sure I got everybody here. So let me just holler out names that aren't here and see if they're under a different name. So Janae Duhart, present or not? Leticia Hurd. Uh, Clayton Rivas. I know everybody else is here, so. Um, since it's our first night, we won't do a support lab. Um, but what we'll do Thursday, starting Thursday, the support lab I use for the ones of y'all that got support, to go over any homework problems that might be bugging you from either the support or the college algebra class, okay? So tonight, get familiar with your math lab, do your course agreement, which is the first assignment in the math lab. Um, play with 2.1, and I guess I will see y'all Thursday night. Um, so someone's asking me, how do you know if you're in a support class? Your schedule will list a three-hour college algebra and then a one-hour support lab if you're in support class. And I was in trouble with the Zoom earlier. I couldn't get it on my laptop, so I'm on my iPhone, but I don't know if it. Um, I had you here. Let me see. Jasmine, let me see. It's Jasmine Morant, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um. That's the only thing about the Zooms is internet issues. Um, so if I ever go blank on here, I have to reboot mine. So you'll have to clock back in. Um, it don't tell me when y'all are actually being knocked off. I just know when I have to let y'all back in. Yes, sir. So. But Jasmine, here's the thing. Anything you missed when you got knocked off, I'll have a video that I'm sending in about an hour or two, and you'll be able to see the whole lecture on it. Okay, awesome. Okay, so, and if y'all get sick or can't come, use them videos to sort of keep up with me, okay? Yes, sir. Do we need to let you know if we're not planning on coming or? Um, well, since it's online, not really. Um, 
just remember every two or three weeks, I got to give y'all like an attendance grade type thing, participation. So um, if you're not able to come, try to use my videos to keep up in that math lab, okay? Okay. Um, but yeah, sometimes if you're sick or something, I'll, I'll, uh, won't hurt, the, hurt your attendance with that. All righty, y'all. So I got everything, every one of y'all checked off. Uh, 2.1 college algebra, graphing the same things we just did in class. Support has a few problems. If you're in support, it's just graphing straight lines. It does not have any of the curvy lines or anything like that, okay? Um, we just have two assignments, just a course agreement and a 2.1? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are we free to go now? Yep, I'm going to let y'all go, and uh, it'll give me about an hour or two to get this on YouTube and have a link sent, okay? Thank you. All right, y'all have a good you. day.